Greetings, folks. Sealer here. Welcome to my port and the continuation of my review of the new premium tier 8 German battleship, the Odin. In this video, I will go over her detailed technical specifications, uh, my ship build, including commander skills, ship upgrades, uh, suggested signals, some other thoughts on the ship. Uh, the other video that you can watch with my review of the Odin uh, is gameplay with discussion around her gameplay practices and how I think she will best perform in-game. Uh, it might be best for you to watch that video first if you haven't seen it already, although you can watch either video in either order. But I will make references to the gameplay events uh, during this review of her technical specifications. So starting with her armor... The Odin does carry battleship level armor, and this is one aspect that I did discuss in the in the gameplay review in the other video. Uh, she has a 32 millimeter bow. She has a 60 millimeter icebreaker belt or forearm fore and armor belt uh, that extends all the way to the prow of the ship. Uh, that means that although most of the bow is 32 millimeters, it does mean that any shells striking this icebreaker belt at an angle is going to deflect. She has, uh, again, a 32, mil 32 millimeter aft, uh, but she has a 90 millimeter aft and armor belt. Uh, so this means, I think, that if she's in a kiting posture and she angles away, she actually has a pretty good chance of deflecting pretty much anything fired at her unless it's able to get above the uh, for, uh, aft and armor belt and over into the 32 millimeter area. Uh, she has a 50 millimeter deck, which means that any calibers... Uh, even up to the Shikishima that comes in shallow enough, it's going to deflect off the deck. Uh, her turrets are the same as on the Eger. These are pretty well armored. Uh, these aren't as well armored as you know the top tier battleships in the game, but these are about as well armored as you will often see on tier 8 battleships. Uh, and like I said, they are armored the same as on the Agar. So they, unless shells are coming in very close range, perpendicular to like the forehand, uh, frontal plate, excuse me, uh, generally, this, uh, her turrets will deflect everything. Now, uh, like with the Eger and the Siegfried and, uh, frankly, all of the upper-tier German battleships, they have a division in their side belt. So the upper armor belt on the Odin is 45 millimeters. And this is going to allow pretty much any AP caliber, uh, including um, heavy cruiser caliber, if she's broadside, uh, will easily get through this 45 millimeter plate. Uh, that is thick enough to arm most or all caliber shells, and that means that she is going to take a lot of penetrating damage. And if you, when you watch the replay that I did, again the other video that I did on the Odin, uh, there were a couple places where I took some pretty significant hits from a Vladivostok because I was not angled well enough. Now, if I'm sharply angled well enough. Uh, all calibers are going to deflect off of the 45 millimeter side here, but if I'm showing too much side, even 45 degrees or even 30 degrees in some cases, uh, the AP is going to get through uh, this upper armor belt pretty easily and she will take full penetrating hits. Her main armor belt is 320 millimeters. Uh, this is uh, pretty strong. And so again, if she's well angled, she's going to deflect everything. If she's side on, uh, it's going to take some pretty big calibers and some fairly close range to be able to get through this uh, main belt. Now, as is the case with the German battleships, she does carry the turtle back. So that is the slope deck. It's on either side of the Citadel. The Citadel sits pretty low in the water. It looks like it comes up just to the water line. But basically anything coming through the main belt and striking the slope plate is more likely to ricochet upwards above the citadel and you will still take penetrating damage. But again, the turtleback will preserve you from taking citadel hits, uh, as is the case with other uh, German battleships plunging fire coming through the deck does have a decent chance to get through and to the Citadel. And that's where you tend to more often see Citadel hits on German battleships is through plunging fire that is by bypassing this turtle back and at medium and closer ranges. So uh, from an armor perspective, uh, she's pretty beefy as a battleship. My main concern here is really this upper armor belt that's going to be pretty easily breached by uh, all AP, like I said, even uh, heavy cruiser calibers and light cruiser calibers at very close range can probably get through this as well. 
Okay, so that's our armor scheme. Survivability, this is the point that uh, I discussed again at length in the uh, review, the gameplay review, and has also been commented on repeatedly by multiple sources, uh, is her, eight, her hit point pool is very small for a tier eight battleship. Uh, when she, in her original incarnation, her hit point pool was in the mid 60,000s, I believe, uh, and it was nerfed significantly to 52,800 uh, during the second round of testing. Uh, this means, in my experience, and I think this is reflected in comments from other reviewers, uh, that she just doesn't have the same endurance as, let's say, the Bismarck, which is has almost 70,000 hit points. The Bismarck literally has 31% more hit points than the Odin. So uh, in the review that I did of her gameplay style, I said that I think she better performs as a sort more of a uh, super cruiser, long range uh, artillery cruiser for most of the battle. Uh, and then there are specific circumstances where she can push in and use her armor to be able to drive a flank or drive a cap, uh, but she has to know that she has the health advantage because with this relatively small health pool, she's not going to be as durable as her other uh, tier 8 German counterparts. Now, her torpedo protection is the same mediocre level as with the other uh, German battleships. German battleships, by and large, have pretty poor torpedo protection in the low 20s. Uh, the uh, Bismarck is also 22%. I believe the, the Tirpitz is the same. Yes, it is. Um, so uh, she takes a pretty significant amount of torpedo damage as well. So that's, again, typical of German battleships. Getting to her guns. These are the same guns that are on the Eger. These are the 305 millimeter uh, cal or caliber shells. Uh, she has a range of 19.1 kilometers. Her reload is uh, 23 seconds. This cannot be improved through a six slot on the upgrade because she is a tier eight ship instead of tier nine. Uh, and this was nerfed from 20 seconds shortly before her release in 095. Uh, and as I mentioned in my review during the gameplay, I felt like a 23 second reload works pretty well. Uh, I didn't, since I'd never played her with a 20 second reload, I don't have a sense for how severely hampered she is by having this, um, by having the increased reload. I felt like this was, this worked pretty well. Her turret traverse is very good for a tier eight battleship at 30 seconds. Uh, this is not gonna require expert marksmen. Uh, I expect that a lot of players would like to have it. If you took expert marksmen, you would bring it down to about 27 seconds. Uh, at 30 seconds, however, they're going to easily keep up with the ship in a full turn. Uh, these are matching the Roma as having the fastest tier eight uh, uh, battleship uh, turret rotation in the game it really in my experience is not going to require expert marksmen and again when i get to the uh, ship build you'll you'll see how i have things laid out now the he shell performance the same on the Eger 3600 alpha is the worst at this caliber that's typical of german ships uh, she has a 27 percent fire chance which is actually quite respectable uh, and of course with the german battleships and cruisers and now destroyers they get the one quarter penetration benefit so these shells will penetrate 76 millimeters which allows her to get through those 60 and 57 millimeter plates that we see on a number of upper tier soviet uh, German and uh, Japanese battleships. So uh, the HE is going to be able to get through and when you're dealing with high armored, well angled targets, uh, firing HE is going to generally land you a, a higher ratio of penetrations compared to other ships at the same caliber. So that works pretty well. Now, one thing that is odd, and again, I mentioned this in the review uh, during the gameplay, was that the alpha on her AP shells is 9,400, which is 300 more than the 9,100 on the Eger, even though these, at least by description, are identical guns, identical shells. Uh, I can't explain the difference other than to say that Wargaming looked at their spreadsheets and the, the efficacy of the ships and decided they needed to dial down the Eger's shell performance a little to bring it more in line with its peers. I don't know. Um, but it is just kind of an oddity here that the Alpha here on the Odin, even though they are the same guns, uh, is, is slightly higher.
that's okay. And as I mentioned, the range is 19.1 kilometers. The shell ballistics and velocity are identical for both AP and HE, so you won't need to relearn uh, the shell ballistics. These are pretty flat firing. You're not going to have too much difficulty hitting targets at range other than like those destroyers that you saw at the end of the replay uh, video um, uh, where I was trying to hit them at you know, 15, 16, 17 kilometers. That's a little bit more difficult, but on the bigger targets, hitting things at range is pretty straightforward with these guns. Okay, uh, secondary armament. Uh, this is going to be, again, a part that I think is, is somewhat controversial uh, based on past reviews of her that you may have seen either uh, online through forums or in reviews from various con community contributors. Um, she does have a reasonably good secondary complement, but it is nowhere as strong as, let's say, the Bismarck or the Tirpitz. She carries fewer guns, uh, and, and with the lower health pool and the slightly inferior armor, especially on the upper armor belt, um, this is not, in my opinion, not a ship that should be getting into regular secondary engagements. Uh, so what she has is she has two uh, triple turrets or triple rifle turrets, uh, one in the uh, fore and one in the aft. These are basically Nuremberg or you know Mainz guns, literally on the ship. These are center mounted so they can fire on either side. Here's the other one on this side. Uh, and they are 150 millimeters, which means that they will penetrate 38 millimeters. And they they basically have the same characteristics as the um, as the Nuremberg or the, or the mites, if that if you want to draw a comparison. However, the firing angles, because they are center mounted here, really aren't going to be that good. So if you are forward facing here, the rear uh, the rear turret, the uh, rear 150 millimeter turret, is not going to be able to fire forward. You have to give a lot of side in order to get that this rear turret to fire. Uh, and so forward facing, uh, realistically, it's going to be this forward gun and th these two, which is the other set. So she carries uh, three double rifle turrets on each side of the ship of 128 millimeter secondaries. Uh, these are the same secondaries that you will see on the Gneisenau Bravo hull, as well as the Grosse Kurfürst is the same secondaries on the Siegfried and the Eger. Uh, these penetrate 32 millimeters out of the box. So again, they are gonna do real damage when they hit, uh, but because the number of guns are fewer and the firing angles are not very good, especially if you're for facing forward, these rear turrets are basically not, that. you have to give a lot of side to get them in action. Um, this isn't going to be a very strong secondary complement, in my opinion. Now, I have had a few uh, successful uh, close quarters engagements and, you know, gotten the close quarters kill and the signals associated with it. But to me, that's the exception, not the norm. Uh, I in those few cases that you are in regular brawling conditions or in close quarters brawling conditions, your secondaries will do some legitimate work. Uh, but uh, at, when I get to my build, again, I'm not going to, re I recommend against a full secondary build, even though that um, some reviewers in the past have suggested uh, that th that would be the play style here. I do not think that is the best build for this ship. So that's the secondary guns. Getting to her torpedoes, she has uh, two quadruple launchers. These are sort of the rear wing mounted, uh, like we see on the Graf Spee. They have very good rear firing angles. The forward firing angles are pretty good. Uh, they, I don't know that they're as good as on the Tirpitz, uh, but these are the same uh, uh, torpedoes that you will see on the Tirpitz and on the uh, German cruisers. Uh, they go six kilometers. They um, reload in 90 seconds. Uh, they have a 1.3 detection. They are 64 knots. Their alpha is quite low at 13,700. So for those of you familiar with German torpedo systems on battleships and cruisers, you're going to be very familiar with how these work uh, in terms of the damage they do and so on. Uh, so uh, a very nice thing to have when you're in those close quarter ambush situations. And, uh, and, you know, I haven't had too many opportunities to land torpedoes on targets because I've been playing more at range. Uh, but when those situations occur, it's very nice to have this capability. Okay, AA. Um, now, this is a place where the Odin is not very strong. Um, I tend not to look at the AA defense rating because I think it dilutes uh, too much of the information. What I tend to look for are two things. 
the most important to me is the continuous continuous damage number. This is the amount of HP damage per second your AA will do. Obviously, it varies depending upon the range of the planes from the AA. But generally speaking, this is the damage output of the AA guns continuously per second that um, aircraft carrier players cannot avoid when they fly into your AA bubble. Now your flak, where you do increase damage and they fly into those black clouds that get fired up, uh, is where you can deliver a lot of damage very quickly but skilled carrier players are pretty good at avoiding those. So really to me, the most important number is looking at the continuous damage. Now, when you compare this with other tier eight battleships, so um, the, the pinnacle here is probably in the Massachusetts. I don't have the Alabama. I think the Alabama is even a little better. The Massachusetts has excellent continuous damage at 364. Uh, the North Carolina is uh, 379. Uh, the key, which is a basically a AA beefed up uh, uh, Amagi with torpedoes, has 319. Uh, the Roma is uh, 273. Uh, in fact, the only the only battleships I think that have worse AA than the Odin tier eight battleships are the Tirpitz at 199 and the Amagi, which I currently don't have in port. Uh, right now, but the uh, Richelieu, I think, it, yeah, the Richelieu I mentioned is 311. Uh, even the Bismarck uh, has better AA or slightly better continuous damage at 288 over the um, over the uh, 258 of the Odin. So her AA is not that good, to be honest. Um, so this is a, a reason that you're going to want to try to be uh, escorting other battleships or working with your cruisers to provide yourselves uh, with mutual AA coverage. Uh, the one distinguishing characteristic of the AA for the Odin is her range. Now, most German cruisers and battleships at this tier tend to have pretty poor range. Uh, the Bismarck, Tirpitz, uh, the Hipper, the, the Hindenburg, uh, Rhone, etc., etc., Gorsa Kurfürst, uh, and the Freddy all have a range of 5.2 kilometers, which is not very good. Uh, Wargaming, when they introduced the Odin, the Eger, and the Siegfried, um, they gave these ships six kilometer range, which is much better. And it, frankly, personally, it wouldn't surprise me if at some point Wargaming buffs the other German ships to give them better range as well, because that's kind of been a weakness of uh, the German battleships and cruisers is that their AA range is not very good. Their mid-range AA is ver tends to be very strong, but the range is quite poor. So that's going to be kind of a, a strength of the AA for the Odin. Maneuverability. This is one area that she does quite well in. Her base speed is 30 knots. Uh, it's 31.5 here because I have a Sierra mic signal mounted, uh, and that's a very playable speed. Uh, for a tier eight battleship, uh, and she will obviously keep up with most of her peers. The Richelieu is going to be the exception because uh, the Richelieu gets a uh, speed boost, uh, but otherwise, uh, this is a very playable speed. Uh, as I mentioned in the review uh, or the gameplay review that I did in the other video, her turning circle is actually quite strong. It's less than 800 meters at 790. Uh, that's quite good. Uh, that's not the best. Uh, the Massachusetts is at 710. That's, I think, partly the reflection of her being a South Dakota class, and she's her hull is quite a bit uh, uh, shorter uh, than the other Tier 8 battleships. Uh, the North Carolina is 760, but I think most of the other Tier 8 battleships are going to be quite... Uh, are going to be more than 800 meters. Uh, so the Odin's turning circle is pretty pretty good. Uh, where she's particularly strong is that her rudder is at 14.1 seconds, and this is without any improvements to her rudder shift through upgrades. Uh, and from what I can tell, this is probably the strongest rudder shift other than maybe the Monarchs. Uh, so uh, this is a, a pretty agile uh, battleship or ship classified as a battleship. Um, and then lastly, concealment is also quite good. Uh, so this is a maximum concealment build. It gets comes down to 12 kilometers. Again, I think only the Monarch uh, uh, it bests the Odin in terms of uh, concealment capabilities at tier eight for battleships. 
her detection by a rain air excuse me at six, at eight kilometers is actually quite good that doesn't give her a very that gives her a pretty narrow margin between the time that she's detected by air and planes get within her AA range at six kilometers. So this is pretty good. And then uh, her detection from firing within smoke is a little less than 12 kilometers, which is not something you're normally going to do. But it is a good stat to know um, so that in the circumstance that you do glide into smoke or you happen to get smoked up by an ally um, and you want to see if you can fire uh, from concealment, uh, this is still a good stat to, to know. But bottom line is that the concealment on the Odin in a full concealment build uh, is quite strong. Okay, so those are her, um, her specs. Let's go ahead and get to the upgrades. Again, I ran this as a full tank concealment build. I go into the reasons why that is in a lot more detail in the other video uh, during the gameplay. Uh, survive, you know, Maximizing survivability of this ship with its relatively low health pool to me is the most important thing. So main armaments modification one, this is kind of the standard uh, for slot one. Uh, for slot two, I did go with the damage control system modification. This reduces the chances of floods and fires. Uh, you could put in the hydroacoustic search special upgrade here to extend the action time of the hydro if you wanted to. Um, right now I'm running with the damage control system. Uh, aiming systems to tighten up her salvos. Oh, that's actually one thing I didn't go over, uh, which I want to go back to on the main art main artillery um so her dispersion and this is with the aiming systems upgrade is 233 meters at her maximum range of 19.1 kilometers her sigma is very good for a battleship at 2.0 um, the Eger and the siegfried have uh, sigmas of 2.05 uh, but their dispersion ellipses are smaller uh, the Eger, I think, is in the 160 meter-ish range or 170. I don't remember the exact number off the top of my, top of my head. Uh, but um, this is actually quite accurate, uh, especially for a battleship. So you are going to see some, you know, some battleship-like dispersion, but the grouping of the shells should be pretty good because the, the Sigma is quite good. And um, I do, again, recommend that you take the aiming systems for the ship to tighten up the salvos a little bit. Uh, also, because the reload uh, is at 23 seconds, you really want to try to make your shots count and, and tightening up the, the dispersion is, is going to help there. So uh, that's why I took the aiming systems in slot three. Slot four, again, full tank concealment build. Take the damage control system modification two upgrade in slot four. That um, that reduces fire and flood time or duration so that uh, you you maximize your your endurance. Um, you could take the steering gears modification one to give yourself more better maneuverability if that's something that you prefer. That would bring her rudder shift down to uh, less than twelve seconds, which is very good for a battleship. Um, but I wouldn't recommend it. I think that you're, you know, in order to maximize your endurance, especially if you're going to be facing a lot of tier nine and tier 10 ships, and you're going to have to maximize how long you survive in game, uh, taking the damage control system modification to upgrade is more important. And then the last, lastly, take the concealment systems, maximize your concealment. This also increases the dispersion, excuse me, the third uh, point on the consistency concealment system upgrade is that it increases the dispersion of shells fired at you as well. So this is all of these things are going to work in your favor to improve the survivability of your ship. So that is the upgrades. For consumables, um, the only option to change here is whether you take spotting aircraft or fighter. I prefer having spotter on uh, battleships to give me better angles on firing into smoke or firing on targets that are beyond terrain. Um, I do sometimes use it for the range, but usually it's for the, the better viewing angle on a target that I want to shoot at. Uh, again, it does carry the hydro. Hydro uh, range is five kilometers on ships, three and a half kilometers on torpedoes. Uh, the action time is 100 seconds. Again, you could extend this with the hydroacoustic search special upgrade in slot two and bring it up to 120 seconds if you wanted to. Uh, the reload time is 120 seconds. It, excuse me, it shows here as 114 because I happen to have a November uh, Foxtrot signal mounted on the ship. And again, I'll get to this uh, signals here in a moment. So those are the consumables. 
Now getting to the commander skills, again, I went with a full tank concealment build. That means that for the level three and level four skills, you're gonna be taking, uh, or at least for me, I'm taking concealment expert, fire prevention, basics of survivability, and superintendent. Uh, this is the classic four, set of four that go with a uh, tank concealment build. Uh, for the level two skill, the only one that I'm taking is Adrenaline Rush. That's kind of a staple or should be a staple on all surface combat ships. And then uh, because I don't need to take Expert Marksman, uh, I elected to take Expert Loader because I am switching between ammo types with some regularity as well as preventative maintenance and, pre and priority target is kind of the norm. Uh, some players will prefer to not take uh, one or two of these level one skills. Uh, if you were going to take another level two skill, I would take Jack of all trades and reduce the cooldown on your consumables and your damage control. Uh, so that would be my preference. However, this is a shared commander that I'm using with my Eger and with my Sharnhorst. I think it's a very good fit. I like having the expert loader on the Sharnhorst in particular. I mentioned in my Eger review, I'm not using the skill as much for the Eger as I thought I might. Uh, but I have been using it with some regularity on the Odin just based on the games I've had. So th some choices to be made there. I would definitely not compromise on these other five. So Adrenaline Rush, uh, Basis of Survivability, Superintendent, Fire Prevention, Concealment. Uh, I would just keep all those. And then your only choice is what do you boil down these last three points to? That That is basically what this comes down to. Now, if you really wanted to go with a secondary build, which again, I'm, I'm not ad advising people to do, but if you really wanted to, uh, you could trade off fire prevention and concealment expert and pick up uh, AFT to maximize the range on your secondaries and the man manual fire control for secondary armament skill. Uh, I would still keep the basis of survivability and the superintendent to uh, maximize your endurance as much as possible, but uh, again, I went into this in more detail during the gameplay review. Uh, it's To me, it's very important to maximize endurance through good concealment and minimizing the duration of floods, fires, and so on. So uh, this is the build that I've gone with. Okay, so uh, last item uh, that I have tended to go over, at least in terms of specifications, is are the uh, signals. So again, as is the case with kind of a standard set of signals for uh, battleships uh, take the bottom six here for combat signals uh, November Foxtrot to reduce the cooldown on your consumables Sierra Mike to increase your speed uh, India Delta to increase the rate at which HP is recovered when you use your uh, repair party uh, uh, the Juliet uh, Yankee Botus 2 which decreases uh, flooding time the India uh, Yankee signal to decrease fire duration and then sort of the ubiquitous uh, Juliet Charlie signal to avoid detonations. I know that there's sort of mixed opinions about using this on a battleship. Battleships do detonate. Uh, if they take a torpedo or some other hit that's directly uh, underneath or next to their magazine, like next to one of their turrets, uh, they will detonate. And it is something that uh, actually some players uh, are actually pretty good at being able to do on on a, on opponents. So this is a decent signal to take up, certainly for competitive purposes as well. Okay, so those are the signals. Um, some final thoughts on on the Odin. Um, so far, I have had kind of a mixed experience, and again, you'll hear some of that when it when you review the uh, gameplay review if you haven't seen it already. Uh, I do think that she is better played as the long range artillery super cruiser rather than a traditional battleship. I think there are going to be select circumstances where you have the health pool or the health advantage. Uh, that you can drive the caps and sort of be the tip of the spear. But by and large, I think the Odin is a very capable ship. Um, but I, I, right now, based on the experiences I've had so far, I don't see her as a full-fledged battleship the way that she's classified in game. This triggers the argument about whether we should have a battle cruiser classification in game. I'm not going to get into that in this video. Uh, but, uh, but the Odin, by and large, as a package, to me, is a very capable ship. Um, but I, I, I want to stress that uh, if you go in with the mindset you're going to play this like a battleship, like you would play the Bismarck, I th at least for me, based on the ex experiences I've had, uh, it's going to be a little bit disappointing, but I have had more success playing her as the long-range artillery cruiser. 
So um, I hope uh, that my review here was useful and interesting to you. Uh, please again, do check out the other video if you haven't already. And again, I'll leave a link to that in the description below. I'll leave any comments, questions, or thoughts or ideas that you have in the comments of the video. I read everything and I'm happy to answer any questions that you may have that maybe I didn't answer clearly or I need to clarify. And with that, we hope to see you out there on the virtual seas and we wish you happy sailing.